Welcome to the Brothers Grimm Seeds and Friends podcast. Today we have Matthew Gates, an IPM scientist from San Diego. He's been a good friend of mine for a long time. Matthew, thanks so much for coming on today. How's life? How's the bug business? Busy, especially since we're getting ready for springtime. Uh, tell everybody about what you do. I'm an integrated pest management specialist, which means that I help people mitigate pests Usually, hopefully, before they're a problem, but oftentimes afterwards as well. That can be anything from helping people choose a new product that they're looking at to helping them understand what the pests are in their particular growth space is and the best ways to treat them and also prevent them in the future so they don't have the same problem that they have now. And you create a lot of content online about pests and pest control, what are your handles? You can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Sync Angel, that's S-Y-N-C-H, like synchronize, A-N-G-E-L, angel. You can also find me xenthanol.com, of course, for professional inquiries. And you can also find me on YouTube with the YouTube channel name Xenthanol. And your content is outrageously cool like if you're into cannabis cultivation and you're not following his stuff you're missing out big time so check it out uh matt teaches so much about pests and he does deep dives so you can expect also to see uh interesting creepy crawlies that he takes on his own videos and he's out there in the trenches uh helping farms and home growers for several years now so if you need help with pests he's your guy and today I have a bunch of products to show Matt and I want his feedback and I want him to share with you all about what these products are. So I've been collecting them over the years and uh, why don't we start off with Organicide. Matt, check out Organicide. What is it? So you can see whenever you look at a product, you can take a look at the label. It's very important to look at the label before you're going to use any kind of product. You can see here that it is advertises being bee safe, which means that it doesn't harm things like honeybees and also, very importantly, native solitary bees that are way more common than honeybees are. They're very important and often overlooked. It says that it's an insecticide, a fungicide, and a miticide. This is probably to do with the fact that the active ingredient is sesame oil. A lot of horticultural oils are effective against insects and mites because it suffocates them. And in regards to fungi, it can also kill the uh, spores and also the tissue in a similar sort of way. Some horticultural oils, they also have maybe other compounds that are carried in that might be toxic or something like that. But a lot of times these are toxic in a way that is not damaging to us, but is damaging to insects and other kinds of organisms. So I would say about this, um, it smells really bad, but it works really good. And it's very cost effective. Like this is very cost effective. This is like budget growers, best friend kind of deal. So that's Organicide. And another product in house today, Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. Matt, this is a, uh, what kind of product is this? So this is, you can see on the active ingredients, this is a spinosad product. There's several kinds of spinosad products out there. Spinosad is made out of different spinosins. In this case, spinosin A and spinosin D. And it's really effective against things like caterpillar larvae and beetle larvae and some other kinds of insects, essentially, the larval form most usually. And you can see that on the package, it has a list of various organisms, various insects that it works well against. So you would apply it on foliar applications and basically it requires the insect to eat it first and then the compounds are toxic to it and it kills it after it's ingested a little bit. All right, hydrogen peroxide. Super common, right? You can find this in many places, and although you can use it against wounds and those sorts of things, in this case, I'm most most commonly encountering it as a basically oxidant. 
some kind of a sterilant, so something you would use after you cleaned the debris and other kinds of things around your grow space, especially in like an indoor setting. You can also sterilize tools and things like that. It doesn't work very well when you don't do that because if you don't, then there's muck and debris and things where these microbes can kind of hide out and you don't get the coverage. And so the hydrogen peroxide oxidizes something else instead of something living that you're trying to kill in this case. So it's very important to use it appropriately with regards to that. So it works the best against microbes. Sometimes people try to use it against insects and other sorts of things in, for example, the soil. But to be honest, usually it's not as effective as against microbes. All right. How about this Monterey BT? So Monterey BT, this is also very commonly found in a lot of places. Um, the BT stands for Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a kind of bacteria, but there are different kinds of BT out there, so it's important to pay attention to the strain. And you can see here that it's Bacillus thuringiensis subspecies Kirstaki. The Kirstaki strain is very popular for use against caterpillars, whereas other strains like Israelensis is used against fly larvae, like fungus gnat larvae and that kind of a thing. And that's got a OMRI listed. What does the OMRI list sign mean? If it's... Oh yeah, so OMRI listed means that it's an uh, organic product. It's OMRI listed. O-M-R-I. I'm forgetting what the name actually means. That's okay. All right, I've got a bag of mosquito bits and I use it to kill fungus gnat larva. So like we just said, there's different kinds of bacillus out there. In this case, we have bacillus thuringiensis israelensis. Israelensis is used against fly larvae. Fungus gnats are really common in cannabis and they're also commonly used, uh, this is commonly used against them, I should say. You can also use it against things like shore fly larvae, and as the name obviously states, you can use it against mosquitoes, though they are not really a problem for cannabis. They are a problem for the cultivator, though, so that's another kind of important pest control. And this is good for hydroponics, aquaponics, soil growing, the works. And how about this bottle of Serenade? A classic, Serenade. So Serenade is another Spinosad product. Oh, sorry. No, it's not. <laughs> Thinking of uh, a different product. This is Serenade. The active ingredient of Serenade is QST713 strain of Bacillus subtilis. So Bacillus subtilis is used against fungi, but Bacillus thuringiensis is used against insects. The bacteria are closely related, but they do not do the same sort of thing. Another crucial reason why identification of your actual problem or problems is critical to success. If you use the wrong product, it's not going to work. And so you would spray this on foliage where you find the fungi that's a problem. Really commonly used against things like powdery mildew, for example, but there are other fungi that you could apply this against and see results. I believe it's rust on the label, rust and gray mold. So that's what's on the label. Gray mold is probably referring to botrytis, which, as many people know, is incredibly problematic in cannabis as bud rot. And diatomaceous earth, how about that? What is it, Matt? What's it all about? Diatomaceous earth, really common. It's made from these things called diatoms. They live in the ocean, and they have a silicate body. But there's millions of them. So we harvest them, we crush up the silicate bodies, and they become these like glass shards. Well, it's not a big threat to a lot of organisms, but it is to insects and mites. It gets into their joints, and it really ruins their day, and it eventually kills them. It's effective as a dry product. You can't let it get moist or wet. It loses efficacy very quickly. The kinds of places you would apply it are foliage, or on the soil, but when it gets wet, you'd have to reapply it. You can also use it at the thresholds between entrances and exits where you think that different kinds of pests are going to move through. So diatomaceous earth, it has its use case. You have to weaknesses and limitations, like all products. All right, so give me an idea of a product that I'm missing. What would you recommend I add to my arsenal? You could add a bunch of things. 
one of the products that would be really easy to apply would be something like pyrethrin. Pyrethrin is a natural compound. It's derived from chrysanthemums, and it also decays really rapidly in the presence of light. So you can apply it, you can kill the insect, and then it basically decays. It becomes other harmless compounds afterwards, which makes it really great to use in cannabis. You don't have to deal with nasty synthetics or systemics and things like that. It kills uh, insects only. What about, is it a miticide or is it a fungicide? Oh, good question. So it doesn't actually attack fungi and not really going to be your hard counter against mites. I'm sure you could probably pump something heavily with pyrethrin, like a spider mite, for example, but it's not really going to be as effective as a more mite-focused product. Good question. So this one's more for aphids and thrips? Exactly. That's exactly the kind of thing you would use it for. You use it for caterpillars, aphids, thrips, white flies, and those kinds of small insects that you would encounter in a home grow or a commercial grow. All right, Matt. Let's see. Over the years, people have come to you for all kinds of help and home growers, commercial farms, uh, cannabis growers, and even non-cannabis growers. What's your preferred way of people reaching out to you? My preferred way for people to come contact me for professional inquiries and even other kinds of help is through my website, xenthanol.com. But I am very active on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, Xenthanol, and I get a lot of attention on my Instagram which is at Sync Angel, where people ask me all kinds of questions, and I even have a weekly live stream where you can basically ask me any kinds of questions that you want, and that's usually at Sundays, 1 p.m. PST. Oh, thanks for the invite to Brothers Grim Seeds fans community, and I know I'm going to be attending more. Um, Matt, any questions for, for me today? How do you keep so optimistic? You're such a happy person. I love talking with you. You're very charismatic. That's because I get my sleep. <laughs> you got to get a good night's sleep. Like, nothing can get in the way of sleep. No exceptions. You get a good night's sleep and you should wake up in a pretty good mood as long as you're eating healthy and smoking good quality weed. Let me put it to you that way. That's, uh, I'm convinced. <laughs> um, what's your favorite kind of weed to smoke these days? What have you been puffing on? To be honest, I'm a big fan of really gassy, uh, gassy smells and citrus stuff. So uh, recently I was having some lemon haze that was pretty nice. And uh, I had a concentrate from a friend of mine. I'm just forgetting the cultivar, unfortunately, but it was very gas and very citrus. So definitely within my wheelhouse. I also like piney stuff too. And I feel like that's not as common, unfortunately. Yeah. I've got some ossifer growing, which is our cap junkie cross with Rosetta Stone, and I, it's smelling kind of like chem dog sour diesel. I'm really, I like it. really excited about that. I was smelling it like, oh, I haven't I haven't had that in a while. So I'm really excited about the ossifer we have, and come back in a couple, come back in a month, and you can try it. Also, the Motahari is a very relaxing strain, and it smells like floral cookie dough and uh, it's not gassy but i think you're gonna like it and i want you to try it and give me your feedback so when well, next time you're here you're gonna sample some brothers grim seed strains and yeah I, I, i'm gonna have you do some fact checking uh, i've got a lot of episodes in the canon and then i'm just gonna start publishing them one after the other after the other after the other um so i've got about five in the canon and with you maybe six um, so yeah, once, once those get played, you know, which I kind of like, I make note of things that, well, well, what does science say about that? And you're one of my favorite fact checkers. So I'm going to be bringing some opportunities for you to do some fact checking on our guests. I'm not saying all our guests are going to always be scientifically perfect and accurate. And the reality is no one's perfect anyway. So it's like, uh, you're just a great guy to weigh in and help people kind of objectively assess a situation in an objective way and that's something you do uh, on the internet like um, with such class too like the way you just approach everything so everybody follow Matt uh, on Instagram it's at sin change sin change angel sink angel sink angel <laughs> sink angel here we go sink angel and 
Uh, last but not least, I got a little present for you here, Matt. Bada bing, bada boom. Put that on. Look at that. This Ooh. is this is the same color as my jacket. I didn't even realize that I would be getting something like this. That's the praying mantis hat. I like it. I think I look pretty good in this. Thank you very much for the present. You're welcome. What is the praying mantis known for killing? A lot of big pests that, to be honest, and this will be a good topic for our next video, praying mantises and lady beetles aren't really cracked up as biocontrols like you would think. So we'll talk about that in another episode. Okay. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you very much for having me. Boom.